The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by CNMC, Syngenta Canada, and the Alberta Wheat Commission. I'm Kelvin Hepner for Real Agriculture, and pleased to be joined by Adrian with Bill Berry and Adrian talking about green on green spraying technology. Where are we at in terms of applying this technology here in Western Canada? So this is the first year we are working uh, here in Canada as a company. So we are working with Agrifac, the sprayer manufacturer from Netherlands. And we did some trials in cereals, so green on green in cereals, meaning cereals being wheat, oat, and barley and rye. And we detect broadleaves in this kind of in this crop. We tried grass in canola, so yeah. And uh, we also had a try for weeds in corn, so meaning broadleaves and grass at the same time in corn. Okay. So to take a, a step back, maybe Bilberry is a company based in France. Uh, where do you see this technology being applied in terms of around the world, other areas that are already using green on green spraying technology? We are using like production level algorithm in uh, Australia. That's our main market. We have a, the most part of our fleet is there. We also have some uh, sprayers in Europe as well for green on green. Okay. Because green on, we consider that green on brown is like standard now almost. So we are focusing on green on green and all of our sprayers yeah, are green on green ready if the algorithm follows the, the result. Okay. So for those who aren't familiar with green on green technology and how these cameras work, can you walk us through the, the process of how this controls the, the sprayer in, in, and ultimately controls weeds? That's the idea? Yeah. yeah. Basically our camera is like a, a human eye so and we, we are looking a few meters in front of the boom. So. As a human, if you can spot the weed in a few meters, then our cameras, our cameras will be able to detect it. So then that's basically it. We are looking in front of the boom, we are detecting the weed, and we send the op- detection order or opening orders to the nozzle controller from the sprayer. And then they compute, depending on the speed of the sprayer and so on, they compute the right time to open the correct nozzle and then we can spot spray directly on the weeds. Okay. How fast can you drive the sprayer when using this? We recommend 20 EKs per hour. That's so that'd be 12, 12, 12 miles, miles an hour? 12 miles an hour. Okay. Yeah. Do you see other applications for this technology? Uh, fungicide, maybe perhaps variable rate fungicide? Yeah, at some point we, we want to go there too. So, as I said, since it's a human eye, if this is an issue or a problem or something you want to do and you are able to do it with your eye as a farmer as a human then we will we should be able to do it with our camera according that we have enough data and enough training time of our algorithm so if for our fertilizer application if you can detect spot where you want fertilizer and spot you don't want fertilizer then our camera could work once we developed uh, the correct algorithm for that. Okay, so fertilizer, is, fertilizer, fungicide, I guess, would both be yeah. potential options. Exactly. So, like you said, uh, this technology is already in the market and, and more widely used in Australia. Mm-hmm. What's it going to take for green on green technology to be more widely applied here in, in North America? Well, since we, we worked the full season here, so since April, so we gathered a lot of pictures of Canadian fields, so Canadian weed too. So now we need a AI team to, uh, well, to annotate all the pictures, check that we still detect all the weeds and so on, and then just improve the existing algorithm. So if we basically if we had if we gathered enough enough pictures on this year, then probably still uh, next year we should be able to have a production ready algorithm. If there are some situation we didn't capture this year then we'll have to wait another season to train the algorithm in this specific case to have it uh, right to improve it in, in fact even in australia it's been like three to four years that we are working on a production level and we are still improving because of there are new situation you know if the sun is facing the the sprayer if we are, if you're driving with the sun at the back the height of the crop also have an influence because if the weed is behind the crop well, you, we, you cannot see it, so a lot of stuff like that. It's, yeah, we will improve every, as long as Bilberry exists, we will have to improve our algorithm because we will have new situation and new, uh, yeah, new cases to, uh, to solve. Mm-hmm. 
What are some of the common questions that you get from farmers when it comes to issues that they see with this or, or questions they have? With spot spring, one of the biggest questions is how, how, could, how should they fill their tank? Mm. Because when you broadcast, you know your acres, you know your rate, you know everything, so you can you know how much liter you should put in your in your tank. With spot spring, you don't know. You cannot know in advance. So that's one of the issue. How much chemicals, how much water should I put in my tank to have the less leftover? And we cannot enter that question yet. It's uh, mainly experience. You see a field, you know all the savings you, you may have, so you will fill your tank uh, accordingly. Mm-hmm. Um, one question we have also is um, sensitivity of our system. And as I said, it's like your human high. So basically it's, it means five centimeters uh, three to five meter in front of you, uh, we should be we we are able to see it, and sometimes the camera are better than the, the the eye, so we could spot very, you know, very tiny grass weed, but we cannot make any uh, commitment on that. Sometimes you will see them, sometimes you won't, but we we commit on the few centimeter wide weeds. Okay. That's where I guess we could get into all kinds of different sprayer setup options with multiple tanks, multiple products, exactly. different rates. All, yeah. all those opportunities are opened with this. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, for for example, at the moment in canola, we can only detect grass because broadleaf looks like canola, so we need to improve that. But at the moment, <clears throat> what should you do if you have grass and broadleaf in can in a canola field? So you cannot, in a, in a Canada, for example, the season is too short to have two, two sprays for the, at the same time, at the same timing, at least. So we, on our side, we need to improve that part to be able to detect grass and broadleaves in canola. But in the future, or in Australia, for example, they have a longer um, season, so they can broadcast broadleaf at one point and then go a second time in the same field for grass in canola. For example, this, this kind of okay. stuff, and using the, that second application, then would be using the the, the, spot the green yeah, spot exactly. spring. Yeah. Oh, the okay. first one is they do it in the okay. the order they want. Okay, what about from a herbicide uh, resist combating resistance? There's a, of course a, a major role for this in combating resistance, yeah. allowing for higher rates or even more expensive products, but using less overall. Exactly, since you can use less chemicals, you could use more expensive ones. And even if this, uh, these chemicals like kill the crop on the on the square, the, <clears throat> since it's only on the square and not on the broadcast on all the field, you can allow you to like to lost to lose some uh, some crop. But if you can kill the weed for sure. Mm-hmm. To, uh, Finally, then Adrian, what are you aiming for? What's the target in terms of savings for a, a farmer who uses this technology in in North America? We don't really know yet how much saving you can expect in uh, North America. In the, we know, but we know that in Australia you can expect on average 80% of savings. But Australia is drier, so they have big patch of weeds and less weeds, so obviously you will spray less. So that's why you can reach very high savings. For example, we have in one specific field we reach uh, 98% of savings. So that's crazy, but. Mm-hmm. Yeah. On, a, on average, on the whole expo- exploitation, you can expect 80% of savings in Australia. All right. Thank you very much for your time and your insight into this, Adrian. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>